Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. God goes up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of the trumpet. Lift up your voice. Let God arise. Let the glory and the sound of his glory fill the earth. going. Let me challenge you here. This is an opportunity to really release what's in you. Not to go into your standard worship routine, even in with flags and everything. This is where we go before him. And the word says that God goes up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of the trumpet. That when we walk in his countenance, that there is a shrill, there's a cry, there's a release of sound. 
That is literally what it means to ruah, to give praise to the Lord. In Psalm 150, every one of those words means that. That we actually release. And when you're releasing and giving Him praise and honor, you are pinpointing the light of your being right into that place. Yes, it is an actual audible sound where you bring the audible sound, your spirit, which is releasing light into agreement. You get it. This is revelation right now. The reason we don't open our mouth is because it's not our style, but I'm telling you right now, something happens when you bring your body and release the sound in the earth as it is in the heaven because your spirit is already doing it. And in your, when you release that sound, when you release that halal sound, it goes like a light in agreement with that of heaven. You and yourself bring it into agreement. David did this and it was, he wasn't worried about his reputation. So I say this as we go back into this, and we haven't left it, that we begin to release that sound, let it out, and pinpoint it into Hong Kong, pinpoint it around those that we've mentioned before, and the situations we are involved in. You get it, begin to do that. You ready? One, two, one, two, three, and...
peace into your heart. Justice, God. We love your judgments, oh God, your process, your justice. We love it, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. sense them. We feel them dispatched. Oh Lord, thank you for giving us a taste of what 
Israel when they put their singers and dancers out front. The war was won when they did that. We see it now. We're experiencing it now. They just rejoiced because of you. Oh God, because of you. Oh Lord. They went out with joy. They went out with victory. Everlasting joy was upon their heads. Nothing could come against them. Jehoshaphat, Josiah, all of them put those musicians out front. David and the singers and the dancers and the maidens and the flags and the banners. And the enemy would hear it and flee. Thank you for restoring this heritage to us. Thank you, Lord. But Lord, it's the government you have restored now. And we just thank you. Lord, the supernatural strength for us now, Lord, because of pouring out in the body that which is spirit and bringing into agreement, Lord, that the heavens and the earth are in agreement here. <coughs> through our praise and through what is in us, the heavens and the earth are in agreement with what is happening in the heavens, with the release of all that light and glory. You were just doing the same. Don't let anybody tell you that they have a style and what they're comfortable with. <coughs> That's their culture. But the kingdom culture is what we just did. This is what the heavens are doing. This is what the angels are doing. The kingdom culture is not our culture. It's the kingdom culture. <coughs> they are halaling. They are doing what David did. They are blessing God. And when that happens, the angels begin to rejoice. The light begins to rise, not fall, arise. The glory of God begins to rise because the kingdom is in you. And literally by releasing the halal praise, by releasing that, we're literally bringing into agreement that which has been established in the heavens now released in the earth. Psalm 119, verse 164. Seven times a day and all day long I shall halal the Lord. That's what this was. Releasing his glory. Giving him glory. Releasing his glory. Can you say it is so? Can you feel it? It is so. It is so.
that healing flow over you right now. Just receive it right now. Receive it. He heals us and restores us so that we can carry out more. Heal. Be healed now. You're in him.
say yes are you do you want to say it in Hebrew how to say yes in Hebrew this is no joke to say yes in Hebrew is Ken yeah. it's Ken that's my name is yes in Hebrew and I'm walking down the streets in Jerusalem I'm always anchoring my head because they're saying Ken 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 I think they don't know they're just saying yes you ready you're not calling out my name you're saying yes you ready Say yes. 
Yes, God. Check out the nation that we are responsible for right now. The name, it, it blesses them so much to hear this. To say yes, God in Hebrew is Kenya. When you're saying their nation's name, you're saying yes, God. Are you ready? Ken! Yeah! Ken! Yeah! Ken! Yeah!
in our lives, the foundation of our faith is you, Lord Jesus, the beginning and the end. It is you, the Word. It is you, O Lord, the creator of heaven and earth. We bless you and honor you, Lord, in you and through you and by you everything was created. Life of the Spirit and resurrection power. We worship you. We worship you, Lord. You are righteous. You are righteous judge. You come with your righteous judgments to the earth, O oh God, to bring purity, to bring righteousness, to bring your kingdom, which is righteousness, peace and joy. You are a righteous judge. Let your kingdom come and your will be done. Even, Lord, when you speak righteous judgments in the earth to bring order and alignment to your will. Holy Spirit, I speak the words of Isaiah. I will turn my hand against you and I will burn away your dross completely. I will remove all your impurities, says the Lord. Father, we bless you, Lord. We bless you, Jesus, because you are bringing that fire that purifies, that aligns our hearts and minds to your word, to your righteousness, to your power, to your will, to your peace, and to your joy. There is power in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your blood, O oh Lord Jesus Christ. That is what washes our sins away. That is that what purifies our hearts and our minds. It's by your blood and your resurrection power overcoming death. Overcoming the sentence of death that was against us. By your blood we are cleansed. By your word we are justified. By your grace we are saved. You are our God, our King, King, King of kings and Lord of lords. We worship you with all our hearts and all our minds. You made it possible for us, O oh God, to manifest your glory as sons and daughters, God. As the creation cries out for the manifestation of those who have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ our King and Savior. Glory be to your name, O oh Lord. Glory be to you, Jesus. And you say, I will restore your judges to that what they once were and your advisors to their former estate. Afterwards, you will be called a righteous city, a faithful city, Zion will be redeemed by justice and repentant ones by righteousness oh god who can hide from you good who can hide and what can we hide from you you see the deepest secrets of our hearts you know our thoughts our motivations you see our everything that is in us even the things that are hidden from ourselves but you see them all, God, and your love will bring correction and discipline. And your love will bring the fire that purifies us as pure gold. You are making to for yourself a righteous city, a faithful city that everyone will see and know. These are people blessed by their God. These are people that fear their God. These are people that can hide nothing. Everything is open before the Lord. You have given your prophets to discern the times and even the hearts of people. You have given your judges the words to speak those righteous processes in which your children, our children, and our children's children should go through to be pure, to be holy, 
to be righteous, to be those warriors that fight for righteousness and for the rights of the oppressed, to be the voice of those who have no voice, to establish your kingdom of righteousness. And we're decreeing to you, United States, you are a city founded, a nation founded on God. A city of righteousness and faithfulness. That was what was decreed to you. Oh, beautiful nation. Our forefathers, they decree your greatness in Jesus Christ and your beauty in his magnificent grace. And we're speaking to come forth. Come forth and arise. Because nations are crying out for that what was given to you. Nations are crying out the righteous for the righteous ones to go and not root and destroy and demolish the false foundations and build the right foundations as this nation was founded on, upon Jesus. Thank you, Lord. There is power in your name. And we speak that awakening of righteousness and love for purity and the fear of God. We are crying out for those who will fight and stand arm by arm, hand by hand. Those who will give their lives for their brothers and sisters. Those who will not betray. Those who will stand and give their lives and love to death, death. There is power in you. Thank you for your repentant ones. Thank you because we all are your repentant ones. Because we all have felt the fire of God and the shame of our iniquities. But there is a God, a righteous God, a King of kings and the Lord of lords that died for our iniquities to make us righteous and to sit us by his right hand. And if he does not condemn us, who are we to condemn? We speak life of the spirit, resurrection power in the spirit of repentance. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let the face of Moses in the house of Congress be the prophecy that what keeps prophesying the righteous judges as Moses as Daniel as Deborah as all Elijah and all those Samuel and we cry out for one king only one king only the head of all nations Jesus Christ our King our Lord our Savior
Lord, hear our prayer. You shed your grace on us, O oh Lord. Multitude of lights, multitudes and multitudes of lights. So vibrant and so beautiful. I can't. 
kept hearing the Father of Lights. I couldn't remember the verse and the word. Of course, my, <laughs> my love always seems to have that pact within his spirit, within his heart. James 1. Every good and good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth. That we might be the kind, a kind of first fruits of his creation. There's no words, there's no words to even comprehend that in my heart. I'm overwhelmed by the love that he has for us. God, she's going to have to give me the order as we go here. But the scripture that Anna just read, I, I talked to her about Father of Lights, and then, uh, but I, I, I didn't read the whole scripture, but I was over there, and the Lord's speaking to me about first fruits. And boy, I'll tell you, I, I, I've got to tell you the Lord I'm over there and, and God's speaking to me and he says you remember the woman caught in adultery in the very act and he's like well yeah Lord I remember that story This, and then he spoke to me this is what I wrote in the sand this lesson is for the end of time before my return. And he shared some of this with me before, but but there's a first fruits coming. And this is the womb of that. And 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 what's happening is this woman. How many know I mean and I, I could speak to every woman here and say this and we would all know this. There's no way a woman would want to really, in her heart, purposely be an adulteress. That's just not who women were created to be. So here's this woman caught in the very act. And the Lord spoke to me and said, did Israel really want to be that? 
the day really want to play the harlot? Is that where they wanted to go? And this end times thing that we see, this mixture of the profane and the holy, is that where God's people wanted to be? No. No. But y'all know how you cook a frog, right? And so this has happened, and, and it's happened over centuries, and this isn't about a story of how it all happened, but in all reality, in man's ways, without the Holy Spirit, we have no greater chance, even though we name the name of Jesus, we have no greater chance to do any better than Israel did. And Israel played the harlot, right? And there's a there's a a woman in the end of the age and, and she's prostituted herself and and the scripture says, Come out of her, my people. So God's people are in the midst of what's going wrong, this spiritual harlot in the end times. Okay? And and I want to say first before I go any further with this is I can tell you, having faced that myself, there isn't a pastor or a leader out there who intentionally said, I'm going in this way, in a way that moves him away from what the Lord wants. That's not intentional. And that's why we have the throne of grace. But there's a woman who was caught in the midst of adultery and when all the accusers left Jesus said where are your accusers and she said Lord I don't have any they're all gone and he said neither do I accuse you go and sin no more and so the things that are wrong in, in the organized religious church God's not pointing a, a judgmental finger at them okay he's saying Simply come out of her. Go and sin no more. I don't judge you. I'm not going to lay that at you, at your feet. I already took that. I took that punishment. I knew you would wonder as the days got late. And so there's this woman. Now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. That male child is this last day's manifestation of God's people. This last hurrah, if you will, before the Lord comes. And, and, and shadow of lights, when Angela was speaking about seeing the lights, one of the other things I was seeing, I was seeing, it was like I was seeing in the spirit. I was seeing the big boat, Noah's big boat, and the rainbow, and the, and the promise of the covenant of God. And God says, I've got a covenant that's an everlasting covenant with my son and everyone who calls upon his name. So there's this woman. And this is because I've heard this before. Where, where is the United States in prophecy? And it's right here. The woman was given two wings of a great eagle. And that's where we are right now. And I'm saying to you, the first fruits that I'm hearing in the spirit tonight is this whole region. And this is part of what you said earlier. And this is part of America. Is this whole region is going to shift in such a way that we're going to drop all the religious pretensions and we're going to drop all the denominational stuff and there might be some houses of worship closed but I'm telling you right now God is going to take care of every pastor who goes through this desert because it's going to be a desert to them because many are going to leave that organized religious system and come into a different place but the first fruits of that for the nation are here. This is the womb for that. And the first fruits for the nation, for the body of Christ to begin to 
walk as that repentant woman who is not judged by the Lord but is given great power and great authority in the earth, that woman is rising up. That spirit of, of God that just says, no. We understand we're going to judge ourselves. We're going to take things seriously. We don't need equipped anymore. We don't need another class. We don't need to sit in another pew. We don't need to do this. We don't need to do that. What we're called to do is bring in a harvest. And we're given a promise for that. And I don't know what that looks like, okay? But all of us together do. Because we have the mind of Christ. But I'm telling you, this is that womb. And you already heard that. But this is the region. And that, that's what God is going to do in this region. He's going to reshape the body of Christ in such a way that it truly is going to be organic because you can't do this without the help of the forearm or the elbow or the upper arm or the shoulder because the only reason that your hand moves like this is because it's being obedient to the head but it takes everybody together walking as the body of Christ freed from that stuff that we don't need to be part of anymore. And we spoke last week, you know, you're, you're a representative of that generation. And we're here to bless and to serve and to release. And as things get a little crazy, we're going to need one another. And it's going to get crazy. But this is the time that the Scripture says we would enter into. And all we need to do is continue to call upon the name of the Lord and stand together. Not, not in a religious sense, but in a sense where we love one another. We watch out for one another. We serve one another. Bless one another. Pray for one another. And just watch that glory. Watch the kavod of God come over Zion. And we're going to see it more and more. And, and right now, in Jesus' name, I declare, Ken, healed. Healed. In Jesus' name. We take you before the throne right now and we say, healed. Any other sickness or infirmity in the room? Get it out there because you're getting ready to get rid of it. Anybody? What? You're back? Elbow, shoulder. I got a muscle pulled in my rib cage. I no 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 no. I'd like some new teeth too, thank you, Lord. Pardon? So so all of these things that are in the sickness, the disease, the infirmity, the Lord says by his stripes we are healed. So whatever you've gone through. He took a stripe for that. Yes. He took a stripe for that. For that. For whatever's going on with you, Bill. I know you've been fighting stuff. The Lord says He took a stripe for that. Don't walk in the infirmity anymore. It's, this isn't name it, claim it. This is the anointing of God that flows from the throne. That says, no, I took a stripe for that too. So the Father's saying that we are that covenant people and He is the Father of lights whom is no variableness nor shadow of turning and the judgment of God and the mercy of God. Right? Right? You can't have one without the other because you won't even know you got mercy unless there's... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? you got to go through stuff and learn lessons. But see, the Father says, you know, that's how He treats a child. You wouldn't be going through this if you weren't His child. But now you understand that there's healing in His wings. And that we are a seed of righteousness in the earth. And by His stripes, we have been healed. And so, Father, I just declare this night 
that healing, this will not, this, it, we don't have to wait for the healing to come. We're going to walk in obedience, Lord. We're going to walk in obedience. And when we're wrong, we're going to say we're wrong. We're going to confess it. We're going to submit ye one to another. In the fear of God, we're going to work out our salvation in fear and trembling. And because we are going to walk in your ways as you show us day by day by your Spirit, because we are going to walk in your ways, every covenant promise belongs to us. And we shut every door through our obedience. We shut every door that the enemy has gained access into our lives. And we just thank you, Father, that because of what you have done, no weapon formed against us from this moment on prospers. And every tongue that rises against any of us is already condemned. And we just thank you, Father, that we have that authority. That authority is in your word and your word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld your glory as of the only begotten Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. The law came by Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. And we accept. We accept. We say yes, Lord, to your ways. If there's a problem between people we're not going to put somebody aside and say, well, we're going to get in their face and we're going to work it out. If we can't do, listen to this, if we can't do Matthew 18 when there's a problem, we're just playing games. Okay? We have to stand. If we're going to walk into things of God, we have to be obedient to what the Lord said us, for us to do. We need to conduct our lives Right? In a way that honors His Word. In a way that honors each other's hearts. In a way that honors the leading of the Spirit. No more of this stuff. No more of this stuff where the, where the air is... You know, it's... I used to live in, in Pasadena, Texas for a while. And you know, if you had a nice southern breeze, it was okay. You know, the southern breeze meant hot, especially in Texas. But if you got a northern breeze, it's just kind of something on the wind, you know. Oklahoma. <laughs> no, 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 it's called the refineries along yes. the Houston Ship Channel. It's just like something on the wind. Man, don't don't quite smell nice anymore. And so, we're clearing the air tonight. We're saying no more, no more. We're going to deal in an upright way with one another. We're not going to say things behind one another's backs. We're not going to do anything that says, and come on guys, we all know what's happened. We all know that's part of the problem that you have these issues throughout the body of Christ. It's why people go from one place to the next to the next, and they're never healed, they're never made whole, they never mature. And they just think they need 30 years of equipping. Okay? Before they can sheepishly witness to somebody in Walmart. Right? No. It's time to walk in the power and authority of God. It was, you know, we were in Walmart yesterday, and Angela saw this woman limping, and she's like, What's going on? We need to pray for you, you know? And it's just jump in their face. You're doing it out of love. And guess what? In, in this time, in this age, people need more than anything else. They need the love of Christ like they've never needed it before. And you know, 10 years ago when you would talk to somebody about the Lord, oh, one of those, where, what church do you go to? Now it's just like, do you have the love of Christ? That's what I need. Can you tell me about Jesus? He's who I need. You know, these are, these are things, the anointing is what breaks the yoke. And there's so many people in bondage. They're everywhere. And we're saying right now, we are not going to be in bondage any longer. Because the Lord's coming.
And I want to be among those whom the Lord says, Blessed are those whom when the Lord comes, he finds so doing. Okay? Because there's there's the sheep and there's the goats and there's the you know there's the ones with the wine and without the one, the wine ones with the oil and without the oil, and we have to be the ones that say, Lord, fill us continually, fill us continually, fill us continually, fill us continually. How cool to just I, I mean I'm seeing visions of things that are supposed to happen. You're in you're in angles and you're getting a grocery cart for, for somebody and you brush up against them and they feel the fire of God and they're healed. Just proximity. You don't even have to say anything. You know? Somebody walked by Peter on a sunny day and all of a sudden it's like, oh, let's get everybody out here. This guy's shadow. Look what it does. Wow. So God is doing and He's moving. And I decree right now that this whole region is going to be a first fruits unto the Lord of those who come out of her and serve God with a pure heart and come and worship the Lord in such a way that it doesn't matter. It's, it's just, it's not, it's not the building guys and it's not the support of wonderful men who are doing their best. That's not the problem. The problem is we're not dealing with our issues. And so God's saying we're going to deal with our issues. And we're going to be a people who walk circumspectly before the Lord. Working out our salvation in fear and trembling and, and walking in the joy of the Lord. And we're not going to be keep doing things out of a sense of obligation. We're going to make sure we have agreement in prayer. If there's something massive that God's put on our heart, if the agreement in prayer is there, guess what? The Spirit of God's going to move on it. But if you got a, you got a 10-year-old girl going, what do you want to do that for? I don't see that. I'm getting something in my spirit. Okay? Listen to that voice. There's no, it's, it's level ground, right? We don't have this stair step. What did Jesus say? The Gentiles rule over one another, but it shall not be so among you. Okay, all right. You're sharing. Okay, well, I'm, when the Scripture says, when, when someone's speaking, the Scripture says that someone else gets a word, okay? The first one needs to go silent. So we're going to obey now. Here you go, brother. <laughs> Issues. Thank you, Father. He gave us tools, Alan. He gave us tools and we don't use them because we don't know them. And I, I am, I am, uh, this is out of my element. David... Gosh, he had a heart after the Father. And you know what? He's just like us in so many ways. Or we're just like him, huh? In Psalm 43, he starts out, and what is he doing? Issues. Vindicate me, O God, and plead my case against those people that are harming me, an ungodly nation, or this person, or that person saying this, and I'm not going to tell them because I know I'm right. Oh, wait. Oh, deliver me from that deceitful and unjust man. For you are the God of my strength. How could this be? You are the God of my strength. Not theirs. Mine. Why do you cast me off, Father? Why aren't you doing what I'm telling you to do to make me right? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of my enemy? Why am I so sad, God? You're not getting at them. Anybody experience anything like that? It's foolishness. David knew it. Because he goes on and he says, All right, wait. Oh, send out your light and your truth. Amen. Let them lead me. Let them lead me. Oh, wait. Give me the choice that if you send out your light and your truth, I'll have a choice to let them lead me. Liberty. 
The first part is license. Do it right so I'm happy. <laughs> Second one is lead them. He says, that's right. Lead me. Let them bring me. So send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Oh, give me the grace to make the choice to let them lead me, Father. That's my prayer. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your tabernacle. Boy, did anybody get goosebumps on that? And tabernacle, is, and Keith, you know, tabernacle there can also mean lineage. Nope. Bring you to the family. And then, you know, it goes on, you know, English is such an idiomatic thing. English is not very rich. It's, it's all idioms. Because it says in this New King James, then I will go to the altar of God. It sounds like if you get all this right, God, yeah. then I'll go. I'm American. Got to be right for me. No. It's because all the stuff and the garbage in the first part when he's screaming as a, as a whiny little brat that we all can be. Wow. He says, by verse 4, he says, and then he goes, uh, you know, well, send out your light and truth. Let me have the choice to let, let them lead me. And let them bring you to your holy hill and to your tabernacle. Then I can, in purity, in clarity, go to your altar. To the God of my exceeding joy. This stuff in the beginning is just nonsense. David knew it. And on my harp I will praise you. Oh God, my God. So then he splits spirit and soul. In that place in the tabernacle, he looks and he says to himself, Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? He's talking to himself. Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him. The help of my countenance and my God. Folks, we got tools. When this rhetoric is going on, they should be this, they should be that, this is stuff. This is God. Come on, man. This is what Alan's talking about. Father gives us tools. David. Father, send out your light and your truth. And it'll be in front of you, and now you have liberty to make the choice. Whom do you serve? And I'm not being all the way. Oh, God. Do I want to live in... Do I really want to live in... Vindicate me, oh, God, and plead my case against an unjust people. You know, we I've heard that before, and I finally dawned. I've heard that as... Righteousness. It's self-righteousness. He's mocking himself, David is. We have tools. Father, send out your truth and your light. Let them lead me. Make the choice. This stuff. Stuff I've had in my family that I've watched, that we've had, that you all had. All the little tidbits that go on amongst us all. Oh, come on, man. Open your eyes. We've had a bunch of crap. What did it get us? I'm either right or I'm wrong or I'm just quiet in my soul. And none of it matters. Alan, you nailed it right on the head. And the tool is this. The word splits spirit and soul, right? And he gives it right here. Humility. I know you like your truth. Because I don't know Jack. I know Glenn. <laughs> let, sorry, buddy. Send out your light and your truth and let them lead me. We've got to choose it. It's clear in front of you. And everyone, I know everybody here sees that. It's what Ken was talking at the beginning. It's what Alan was talking about. And it's simple. Psalm 43. This is not righteousness in the beginning. It's self-righteousness. He's mocking himself. It finally hit. Father finally showed me that. But how many times have we read, Vindicate me, O God, like I'm the righteous one. David knew it was full. We have been deceived. Every single one of us. 
Unfortunately, even in the Word. And that's why we have the Spirit of Truth. The Spirit of Truth. So, Father, we pray truth in the Spirit of Hong Kong right now. that fall. You let it go back to its original state. This is not acceptable in this time. It's not. So command your hand, Lord. You make that right. And through the halls of injustice and in judgment in the process, you let that reverb. And Father, in this womb, you give us the heart to know the tools you've given us to ask for your light and your truth to be clear that we have choice in your liberty to choose and all that squabbling and noise and rhetoric that is designed to take it is just falls to the side good night didn't you We have choice. Send out your light and your truth. And let them lead me. That's a choice. reflect a spiritual truth and I'm an Alaskan girl and um, yesterday in the middle of the night I was praying and the Lord brought this picture across the front of my eyes and it spoke of covenant and it's about muskox and if anybody knows anything about muskox they're like buffalo in the way they look, but when they are threatened or when there's danger, they stand shoulder to shoulder in a circle and they put their weak and their young and their immature in the middle to keep them safe. And the warrior muskox stands in a circle like this and they're impenetrable. The wolf can circle around and circle around, but he can't attack because they are standing shoulder to shoulder and each one has the other's back. And the only time that they are at risk is when one of them either chooses not to be standing shoulder to shoulder chooses not to be in the center and goes out on their own and to me that's a picture of covenant that we need to stand shoulder to shoulder we need to protect those that are wounded protect those that are young protect those that are immature and as a warrior is wounded as one of those is wounded they sink back into the middle and the others close rank and I see that that's how we should be in covenant relationship you know it's not that I don't want to be here. I've just never been a, a man of words. Okay? I'm a doer. I'm a laborer. And I'm a servant. 
You're speaking from Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 8. This is in the latter days they'll come together, shoulder to shoulder, but with purified lips that they'll worship the Lord. You see my little boy over here? I see the boy. Where's the little? <laughs> yeah, you're, you're your boy. Six foot two. It's Eyes of blue. Yes, amen. You realize when he was in my arms, my wife and I were in the inner city of Tampa Bay in a completely black neighborhood who hated us. But that's where God wanted us. And for three years, he grew amongst the black kids. And we grew together with the black people. And we brought him Christmas presents and we loved on him. And two years later, it broke, and we became friends. In 1998, the Lord said, with my arm in a sling from another operation, go in downtown Tampa and do Feast of First Fruits. Old Catholic boy, what? What are you talking about, God? Do Feast of First Fruits. I went to my pastor, he said, we don't do that anymore. That's old covenant. But I said, oh Lord, I'll do whatever you want because you healed my broken heart and I want that to be shared with others. Wow. And my wife Lynette went through sheer hell the first three years because not one person from our church would come visit us and they abandoned us. Even the pastor would not come down and visit, so she learned how to pray. People brought us food. She started praying for a stage during that tabernacle's gathering. Excuse me, Feast is, 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 is in Passover time, right? She started praying for a stage. And the one you were on last weekend was the one that God brought. And on the back, two words was written in big, huge print. And every nation of the world was detailed all over it. In two words was Project Unity. I'm like, what? What are you doing, God? He taught me truth that was lost, that the Catholics even stole from Constantine days with the feast days. And the time to celebrate and dance because of the goodness of God. We tried to use it at some gatherings. And you know what happened first? They started fighting over a keyboard. The pastors, they wouldn't share time. They began to fight with monks on who's going to stay up there longer on the stage. And the Lord broke my heart and he said, pray for those that can worship me behind the veil. The pure worshipers that don't need man to clap, but only the Father says, that's what I'm looking for. And we drove it up here after 12 years of ministering in Tampa Bay. He said, it's time to go north, go gather, go gather, go gather. Go north and go gather. That was the words. We hopped in a motor home, my boy, Patrick, a dog and a cat, in a little 28-foot motor home, and lived in it for nine months. And then the first apology ever given to the Cherokee Nation for the Trail of Tears, miraculous happened on our mountaintop. And then he said, on 8808, I want you to do an all nations gathering and call it Restoration of the Nations. And you know what happened? My wife started praying for a tent. She saw a tent in the spirit. And a man showed up a week before and dropped a check in her hand for $8,000 and said, go buy the tent. All because of obedience. Do we have any money? No, we had no money. We had to pray it in. So to be honest with you, I have been waiting for you people for 30 years. That stage, I have painted it, cleaned it, carpeted it barely ever been on it. The tent you were under was such a blessing to me. May 30th last year, remember that? 
that's when I fell in the mud and hurt my hip <laughs> that very day. And I've been limping ever since that day, guys. So it's not that I don't want to be here. But sometimes the pain is so overwhelming, you just can't get up. And God said, just rest. Just rest in me a while. I'm bringing what you need. You know, my wife was so turned off by the church, so hurt that they hurt my kids. She didn't want to go anywhere. Can we relate? So this has been healing to her soul. Now again, she got afflicted with kidney stones, otherwise she would be here limping because she's got a problem with her foot. So what do we do today, me and my son? We're clearing the driveway to take the stage up to the top of the mountain because Dennis, the drummer, had a dream of the stage on top of the mountain. And it was a glorious worship time. Now Dennis is down cutting grass. That's a whole other story. That starts back in Nehemiah where Nehemiah had to kick out Tobiah and say, where are my worshipers? They're out in the field cutting grass. I've always wanted to bless the musicians. They starve. They don't pay them in the church. But the pastor gets plenty, don't he? So change is coming, yes. I would be here more, but I'm a lot of times just tired from working. I think my dear sister over there saw the big field full of people worshiping God, right? So we've been there 12 years now waiting for the right people. And you people are the right people. So I'm asking you today, please come and pray. The Lord said, let the women begin it, okay? That's what's happened, okay? He's raising up the daughters of Jerusalem. He's got a very beautiful job for you daughters to do. You're going to be healed and used to heal the nations because how the church has hurt the women. That's coming. I saw a revival in the spirit where women were laid out because the spirit of God was healing their broken heart. So it's not that I've neglected you, brothers. I haven't, okay? Don't get me wrong. I've had eight shoulder operations, a knee replacement, and other things, but I know I'm still standing, ain't I? And I'm not going to quit. But my wife is the tip of the arrow. One short, quick story, then I'll stop talking. I'm not a man of words. I'm just sharing my heart right now. You know, my wife is Cuban, right? Do you guys know that? See. Si. Okay? She's a Cuban Jew. Oi. And Italian. Oh, yeah, come on. Oh, yeah. come on. Yeah, wow, yeah, come on. Oh, yeah, come on. Oh, yeah, we can do it all. Don't worry, we got it covered. <laughs> One last thing. So after we got married, it was a, it was a miracle. It was a uh, definitely a, uh, a God thing. So I can tell you, we started fighting a lot. No, your wife and you and the Cuban woman. No, <laughs> not at all. A Latina, a Latina and a, and a gringo Latina fighting. Right? Never heard of it before uh -huh. in my life. So I, you know, I'm like, Lord, okay, you, you, you said that the man's the lead and, and blah, 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 and the men of the church and blah, blah, blah. And the Lord spoke to Mark before and I said, I'm raising up an army of women, son. Yeah. They're, they're coming into my kingdom. And I said, okay, she must be one of them because every time we do something, we, we're, a lot of times it's her seeing it. You follow me? So I said, Lord, show me what this is so I can walk it out with her. And I can share this with other men who are fighting with their wives who don't get it either. So all of a sudden, I have a profound vision. And it's an old Indian arrow. And I'm like, what's up with the arrow, God? And he says, look, your wife is an intercessor, and she's a worshiper. And she's the tip of the arrow. He said, you're the shaft and the strength. But he said, I'm the quills, the feathers, and I give direction to you both. And that's what I'm doing in the last days. And a lot of men don't get that yet. Because it starts with the intercession and ends with the worship. And then 
come as the power. So if you wonder where I've been, I just stay home and I pray. I prepare the property for you guys because I know you're coming. I know the worshipers are coming. You follow me? But the main reason is for that generation right there. The millennials who are lost, who need to know one touch from the king, it changes everything. And that's what my prayer is. So if I'm behind the scenes riding my lawnmower, my little pony, cutting the grass, I'm happy. As long as you all come and do what you're supposed to do. You got me on that? Thank you, Jesus, for standing me back up again, bringing me in this healing anointing tonight. Lord, I was at the VA hospital yesterday, and they want to operate on my back, and I'm going to say no, because you're healing me. Thank you for this place, Lord. Thank you for my brothers and sisters who have held the fort down, held this place down, Lord, and will continue to do so. But I'm asking now, Lord, you bring it all together. Shoulder to shoulder, Lord, with purified lips. So that your power and your glory and your love may permeate this whole area, Lord. And then go global. In Jesus' name. Amen. And it's not a long Tuesday morning I was in prayer, it was about 5 in the morning and I go in my living room and I, I sit in my recliner and across from me is a fireplace and I got these two windows on each side and when someone comes in my drive you can see the lights when they drive down because I got a downhill driveway and I'm sitting there praying and I'm going in and out and I'm praying and I'm sitting there and all of a sudden I see these lights coming down my drive and it's like five in the morning and I'm like who's coming to my house at five in the morning well they come down it's a circular drive I hear a car door open and close and I think who is that and then I got a, a deck that goes around and I hear these boom boom really loud footprints feet and I'm thinking what is that coming into my house well it comes around and in my kit around to my kitchen side where the door is and I start hearing growling and barking and I'm thinking what in the world is this and then I like snap out of the spirit and the Holy Spirit says you right now bind the hounds of hell because that is just what has entered your property so I just start going to binding and getting rid of them and it's like I've got to share I don't know about the rest of you but yeah, but in the last month, I have experienced in dreams and in the natural, spiders, scorpions, snakes, rats, and hounds of hell. So I know I'm doing something right. Yes, that's what the Holy Spirit told me. A lot of it is witchcraft, and I've been praying against that, and it's like, it was the most experience that I've had of being in the spirit and seeing in the spirit for a long time and it was just like overwhelming but God is greater God is greater and and, and I have learned to when I know these things are happening I need to rejoice because I know I'm doing something right you know yeah they would not be after me so Lord I just thank you for Holy Spirit who gives me the wisdom to yeah. deal with it all. Amen. Yes. Then be quiet. But <laughs> I just felt the judgment. <laughs> but it's something exciting and precious exciting to me because when we were really in the flow of that worship and it was just amazing, <laughs> um, I felt our, our flooring shift. And I saw in the spirit, and I felt it. It was like I was, and I know that there are some Hong Kong believers that have been praying that we were transported 
and they heard and they were comforted and lifted up. The Lord just showed me it was like I was, you know, we were dangling and I thought, oh, oh my gosh, you know, where are we going? And it was like, and um, I just felt, I'm like, Lord, I don't know if they can hear me, but I'm going to trust that they do. And I'm like, just be comforted. And I was just singing whatever, you know, my spirit was to them. But they heard the whole thing and it was to comfort them and to let them know God has it. And he's raising up a standard in them. That sound, some of those sounds were released. Let me be honest, this, you know, that. Every sound that was coming out, songs, the only reason we even switched into English is to give definition to the sounds that were being released. We weren't just singing songs trying to get started up. We were giving definition to the sounds that were being released. Just like there's a demonstration and manifestation and then came an explanation, like when the Holy Spirit came. So any of the phrases, any of the words were becoming now explanation of the word, of the sound that was being manifested. That is a true halal. That is the true sound. And when you talk transported, I actually felt like, oh my gosh, I feel like I was in Jehoshaphat's army in front. I really felt, oh my gosh, no wonder this is so powerful. You know, that is the sound. So that was really awesome. You know, everyone's heart clear? Really? Okay. No, there's the door. No, just kidding. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Just one thing real quick, um, another illustration from this Alaska girl, caribou. When the caribou run, they run in a herd, but the wolves follow them. But they don't bother them when they're together. But when the young, it's the same illustration, when the young or the weak or the sick can't keep up or are not with the herd, they are picked off by the wolves. And so to stay healthy in the spirit is what we need to do. We need to keep ourselves healthy to keep ourselves safe.